Hello everyone from a dystopian Tory dictatorship of the United Kingdom. But today we aren't talking about the depressing state of the UK. We are talking about the depressing state of America. And someone who is reveling in America increasingly getting closer to fascism is Elon Musk. Now Elon Musk's Twitter has become a hotbed of just like right wing misinformation. As someone who's used Twitter for like over 10 years... It's actually depressing how quickly he's destroyed the site. I've made a couple videos on it now, basically saying how he's made it into 4chan, in that because of Twitter Blue, under basically every single tweet is just the most unhinged, far-right conservative accounts out there. Now, a lot of people object to me calling American conservatives far-right. Like, it happened recently in another video I made, people were saying, I'm not listening to this guy, he just called American conservatives far-right. But please recognize that America is not the only place in the world and America's Overton window is extremely right-wing anyway. And these conservatives, they are far-right. Like, what about them isn't far-right? Can someone give me a counter-argument to how Ron DeSantis isn't far-right? And if given the opportunity, he will just make America into basically a dictatorship he runs. Like, please give me an argument how him and Donald Trump aren't far-right most Republicans aren't far right, and how Elon Musk's own, I don't know, pandering right now is also far right. And I think what this perfectly embodies is the relationship between capitalism and fascism, because a lot of people say, well, you know, fascists, like in 1930s Germany, they were leftists, they were even socialists. But of course, that is a ridiculous notion. Everyone knows that German big business was totally in bed with the fascists in Germany in the 30s and 40s. And due to anti-communism, and because the Allies wanted to quickly rebuild West Germany, a lot of these businesses that helped them didn't get punished for it, never had to reconcile with their past. And Elon Musk is like a combination of these guys and also like Henry Ford in America. And that's probably a better comparison in that it's a guy who became famous for cars and pretty much completely ruined his reputation with his far-right politics. And the small caveat I will make is I don't even know if Elon Musk has politics. And that might seem very weird to say because, sure, he's a very rich man. He grew up in apartheid South Africa. He probably is conservative. But his wild shifts in politics over years is just because this man wants to be liked. And he will do that at any cost. He will buy social media platforms like Twitter and just let them be overrun by the far right as long as they like him, as long as they tell Elon how funny he is, as long as they just basically simp for Elon, he doesn't care. And with his recent, like, partnership with Ron DeSantis, like I said, I think it's a good indicator how capitalists are happy to side with fascists. They don't care. Whoever gives them better business opportunities, whoever helps them maximize profits, if that's liberals, great. If that's fascists, also great. They don't care. And he is helping Ron DeSantis run for president, and Ron DeSantis has recently signed a law helping Elon Musk as well. So we're going to get into all of this today. Before we go any further, please like the video. And in the comments, I guess, tell me what is the most unhinged thing you think Elon Musk has tweeted. I was going to say the Soros thing or the Prosecute Fauci thing. But honestly, every single day he tweets something absolutely like unhinged to pander to this far-right audience he has. But let me know down in the comments. Also, follow me on social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter, but also on Instagram. Also, check out my Patreon for exclusive content. Also, the private patrons Discord server, my Nintendo Switch friend code. I'm trying to build up as many $1 to $3 patrons as possible. So if you care about any of that stuff, consider checking it out. And also, check out my second channel and check out the subreddit down in the description. So it seems like the days of conservatives absolutely hating Elon Musk are long behind us. Like, you guys probably don't even remember at this point. Conservatives used to hate him because of the electric car stuff. Now they absolutely love him because he's allowed them to absolutely destroy Twitter. Like, you know, in my video about how Twitter's become 4chan, with him leading and tweeting, like, every insane conspiracy theory, he just galvanized and emboldened these people to just be absolutely crazy. Twitter is the biggest hub of medical misinformation in terms of anti-vax stuff. Just like absolute far-right garbage like we talked about with the Roman statue Twitter in my last video. And just like allowing conservatives to use this as like their main platform to spread hate. 
Obviously, we had like Ron DeSantis' Twitter space. We had Bobby Kennedy Jr., who don't get it wrong, despite running for the Democratic nomination, he seems to have a habit of completely building a career allying with like far-right anti-vaxxers. And then, of course, we have like Tucker Carlson's show as well. But something I want to talk about first is the story of Henry Ford. And someone actually wrote a good article comparing Henry Ford with Elon Musk. And I actually think it's quite a good one. So James Risen on The Intercept. So um, Henry Ford and Elon Musk and the dark path to extremism. So I want to talk about this first before just diving into just recent Elon Musk tweets to show you this guy just never stops being far right these days. So it talks about like Musk kind of following Ford's footsteps with like the Tesla cars, but going on to say, unfortunately, Elon Musk now seems grimly determined to walk Henry Ford's path much further than he should. But after his spectacular early success, Ford turned very dark very quickly. The consequences of his hateful actions continue to poison the world today. After he had accumulated massive wealth and achieved global fame, Ford allowed bigotry and paranoia to dominate his life. Deeply anti-union, like his pal Elon, he created a network of company spies who surveilled his employees and tried to control their lives. He also bought a newspaper that disseminated lies and anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. Sounds very much like Elon with Twitter. He followed that up by publishing a series of anti-Semitic books influential among European fascists. The Ford Motor Company eventually began to decline as a result of its owner's hateful and erratic behavior. It was only saved when Ford was forced to turn over control to his grandson. Musk seems to be on the same trajectory that led Ford into the abyss. Tesla investigators hired by Musk allegedly hacked an employee's phone and spied on his messages and the stridently anti-union Musk reportedly hired a public relations firm to investigate an employee Facebook group just as Tesla workers were trying to unionize. Earlier this year, SpaceX, another firm that Musk controls, fired employees who had written a letter calling on SpaceX to condemn Musk's tweets. After Musk acquired Twitter in October, he began slashing the company's workforce, including firing employees who had dared to criticize him. Now, like Ford, Musk is going further, enabling right-wing hate on a massive scale. Like Ford, Musk is playing with right-wing fire, just as his auto company is about to come under siege. Automotive experts now predict that Tesla will see its share of the electric vehicle market drop from 70 to 11% by 2025 as a result of increased competition. So the parallels between them are actually pretty apparent because sure, Henry Ford was more ideologically fascist and that's just like a fact. Elon Musk seems like he'll just do anything to get attention and do anything for people to love him, or in the case of like Ron DeSantis, do anything to make as much money as possible, or help his businesses in any way. But it is kind of similar in that Henry Ford bought like a newspaper to push conspiracy theories, Elon Musk buys Twitter, and personally pushes conspiracy theories, and boosts far-right conspiracy theories. It seems pretty similar in my mind. But now let's just go into the insane like world of far-right Elon Musk Twitter and just to show you even further how he panders to this crowd and also how he's just like so complicit in this stuff spreading now. So obviously the famous tweet of my pronouns are prosecute Fauci. So basically Elon Musk has gone for like the trifecta of extremely transphobic, anti-vax and pro-mainstream far-right conservative politicians. However, stuff like this, Soros reminds me of Magneto you assume they are good intentions, they are not. He wants to erode the very fabric of civilization. Soros hates humanity. So, of course, there's nothing wrong with not liking very rich people. Seems very ironic considering Elon Musk is far wealthier. Pretty much seems like he's just boosting this to pander to his anti-Semitic fans. What I love about Elon Musk's personal Twitter account, I can just go on every week and just find, like, absolute crazy stuff or like far-right garbage i've muted him so i don't see his tweets and i literally just went on his twitter today i was making this video and i just thought why don't i just wait until today and like a couple hours before i film let's just go on it and see what he's tweeting so uh, go on his twitter account today currently has 143.4 million followers writes this powerful article the cult of gender ideology is finally disintegrating and then underneath dave rubin saying 
Yet no movement is more anti-gay and anti-straight women than the tea movement. Elon Musk, 100%. Elon Musk, by the way, has a transgender daughter who actually legally changed her name because he's such a terrible guy. Of course, Elon Musk got Tucker Carlson to put his own, like, literal fascist show from Fox News over onto Twitter. And Elon Musk always does this. He likes to act like he wants free speech for everyone. So you write stuff like this. Would be great to have shows from all parts of the political spectrum on the platform. Now, maybe he does want this because it might increase revenue. But I think it's pretty telling. It seems to be only the far right who do this. And he constantly promotes it because, like I said, he is firmly pandering to his audience for attention and for money, I guess. But again, you know, writing stuff like insane about a Breitbart article, which is Joe Biden criticizes states protecting children from mutilation in LGBT Pride Month proclamation. So obviously the framing of that is completely skewed by a far-right publication like Breitbart, and he tweets it out, insane, to his 140 plus million followers. Yeah, and this guy is what? Not far-right at all? Just retweeting conspiracy theories and a horrible fascist framing? of trans healthcare to his millions of followers? Like, come on. Is anyone going to argue with me that Elon Musk isn't either far-right or pandering to the far-right because he doesn't have any proper ideology? Obviously, Daily Wire putting what is a woman was a bit of controversy, but then he tweets it out. Every parent should watch this. So tweeting out literal fascist propaganda about trans people to increase hate against them. Seems like, you know, very lovely apolitical guy. Of course, you had the presidential launch with Ron DeSantis, and I covered this, it was absolute disaster, really funny. But also at the same time, why did he do this? And that, like I said, this is a perfect little story of how capitalists actually do like fascism, despite the weird belief that somehow people like fascists in Germany in the 1930s were actually all communists who hated capitalism. So DeSantis signs Bill shielding Musk's SpaceX from space flight entity liability. Ron DeSantis signed a bill regarding spaceflight on Thursday, just one day after he announced his presidential run in a glitch-filled interview with Elon Musk on Twitter Spaces. DeSantis signed into law CSSB 1318 Spaceflight Entity Liability. The law exempts spaceflight entity from liability for injury or to death of a crew resulting from spaceflight activities under certain circumstances. The measure also requires a spaceflight entity to have a crew sign with a specified warning statement. Florida is also known as a launching point for SpaceX aircrafts, and the new law could potentially shield Musk and other spaceflight companies from being sued for accidents that injure or kill crew members. So when SpaceX has another disastrous launch, but this time with a bunch of, like I don't know, humans inside the flight, being killed and then you find out later it's because there wasn't enough safety because Elon Musk infamously has undermined safety at his various enterprises now Elon Musk can't be sued for that isn't that nice so he hosts the launch of far-right candidate DeSantis on Twitter for his presidential campaign the next day DeSantis literally signs this law again like I said perhaps this like Elon Musk do have politics of their own but their ideology is malleable enough that, of course, they'll side with fascists if it benefits them. They don't care. It doesn't affect them. Like in Germany, it can actually be very beneficial to side with these guys as they create a monopoly for you often. So let's keep going on his recent Twitter. One account he seems to like is End Wokeness. It might seem like it's getting tiring, but End Wokeness is a far right account as well, which I'll show you later. It's not hypocrisy, it's hierarchy. Having two articles next to each other. The decision to capitalize black and why we lowercase white. So according to Elon Musk and N Wokeness, there's a racial hierarchy in America where black people are above white people. Does anyone seriously believe that? Like a racist country like America puts black people on top of the hierarchy. Racism was literally created to make this hierarchy where black people are at the bottom. No matter what, black people are at the bottom of every racial hierarchy pretty much. So the notion that America is like anti-white and Elon Musk is endorsing that. Not surprising for a guy who grew up in apartheid South Africa. And I just found this a bit funny, not totally related to what I'm saying, but there was a tweet about Djokovic um, winning the French Open and it emphasized him being anti-vax. So Elon Musk writes underneath it, wow. 
And then afterwards, he writes congratulations to Djokovic when he posted it on Twitter. And why is this so embarrassing? Elon Musk probably knows nothing about tennis or Djokovic. But suddenly he finds out he's anti-vags. And then he goes tweeting this. It's like when he was at the Super Bowl in the World Cup, like acting like he likes sports. It's so, so embarrassing. So responding to a guy sharing an article saying why politicians are trying to take your children... The guy saying, politicians say we need to protect trans-identified kids from their parents, but we don't. In truth, we need to protect parents and politicians seeking to persecute them for resisting life-altering drugs and irreversible surgeries for their children. Elon Musk tweeting, exactly. State-mandated sterilization of children is utterly contemptible. Shame on those who push it. Just again, completely pushing this far-right narrative about trans healthcare. Like, completely mask off at this point. And he tweets so much garbage like this. It doesn't even get like its own news story anymore. Like a couple years ago, people would be like, what the hell is wrong with this guy for even saying this stuff? But now it's just like, yeah, another day on Elon Musk Twitter where the, you know, just tweeting out absolute fascist garbage like this. So um, a guy called Top Lobster, you can do Adronochrome or you could hate the Jays. Which way Western man? So comparing Mel Gibson to Joe Biden, Mel Gibson is way younger, but apparently because Mel Gibson hates Jewish people, that's what the Jays mean, he's jacked. Elon Musk replies to this. Gibson is really that buff these days. Elon Musk is replying to a tweet saying, Mel Gibson is very muscular because he hates Jewish people. Again, he's not even trying to hide who he's pandering to at this point. So he tweets accurate to this tweet thread by the red-headed libertarian, probably because he's just a simp. But um, Elad Nahorai tweeted Musk just responded accurate to a racist homophobic anti-semitic conspiracy theory that unironically refers to george soros as the lizard god king this one is likely to get less attention due to the fact that it's coded despite its derangement it claims in essence that the open society soros's philanthropic organization controls everyone and everything and if you don't submit to it it doesn't let your business exist all of this aligns with anti-semitic conspiracy theories so again absolutely mask off Here's another one, N Wokeness tweeting, Harvard poll, 75% think less than a million illegals entered last year. When told the correct numbers, 67% want strict the laws. Elon Musk writes, why is this never in the news? Some guy replies to him, the people running the news companies in America hate America and Americans. How did it come to be this way? Asked Elon Musk. The guy replies, what do Epstein, Weinstein and 85% of writers, producers and media execs making the most subversive programming have in common? I'll give you a hint. Trump and Republicans passed speech orders trying to stop you from saying the truth about it, but it's cultural to blame white people. So again, Elon Musk just interacting with people saying, Jews run everything. And Mel Gibson is jacked because he hates Jewish people. Like, absolutely lovely. So just one more account, Elon Musk just seems to love engaging with the gutter of Twitter. So responding to Kanye West, um saying i love the first amendment long live yay i pray to jesus that elon is for real kim.com writes you were right about criticizing the collusion of jewish business people in the entertainment and media industry the overreaction you received wasn't warranted and then he writes uh he shares an article about li times dems voter farming strategy open borders illegal immigration influx illeg legalize illegals provide handouts grow voter base reserve power Biden recently announced he wants to legalize 11 million illegals by granting them US citizenship. And this sounds a lot like Great Replacement. Anyway, Elon Musk writes, behavior follows the incentives for political power, seemingly endorsing this unhinged conspiracy theory. So I'm going to just read a little article by the same guy who was sharing those tweets. But let me know down in the comments, right? So I believe more that Elon Musk does this because he wants to be liked and he sees the far right as the path to like inflating his ego, right? But I saw someone tweeting recently, and I asked this on Twitter as well. I was like, well, do you actually think Elon Musk is ideologically far right, or he just says far right things because he wants to be liked? But then people were saying that if you spend so much time in that ecosystem, even if you began just saying it because you wanted to be liked, not that that makes it any better, of course it doesn't, eventually you just start believing it as well. And I'm very conflicted about that because I do kind of believe that too. But then he's just so embarrassing, like with that Djokovic tweet, right? Like he just pounced on that because he realized Djokovic was anti-vax. Not that he like actually cared about Djokovic winning tennis and stuff. 
So in my mind, I'm just thinking he just always does that. He just like scrolls on Twitter, sees Jordan Peterson and Dave Rubin and far out accounts tweeting stuff. And he just agrees with it because he knows they'll promote him loads. But like people were telling me on Twitter as well, is that like, you know, once you do this so much, why would you not believe it, right? Once you go down that rabbit hole, it's perfectly easy even for someone that old and that rich to become radicalized by just having this crazy echo chamber of the far right on Twitter. So maybe that is true. But again, I'm conflicted. Like I do see those points and I do agree with them. But then sometimes I see stuff he does. And I'm like, he's just doing this for clout. Whether or not he believes in it, he's still literally just being a fascist just because he's parroting fascist narratives. Nahorai also wrote an article for Forward. Elon Musk is the most dangerous anti-Semite in America. So he was talking about all these tweets and referencing the Mel Gibson thing. He said, at no point in Musk's response did he call out the blatant anti-Semitism. As is common for him when interacting with bigotry, Musk responded obliquely, referencing Mel Gibson's physique while ignoring the substance of the tweet. While this could theoretically be an, be an oversight, Musk consistently finds himself chatting it up with Twitter's best-known anti-Semites. Musk's history of amplifying anti-Semites and anti-Semitic rhetoric on Twitter, along with his control of the social media platform itself, makes him the loudest and most powerful anti-Semite in American history. Musk frequently cloaks his anti-Semitic rhetoric in the language of conspiracy theories, whether he's claiming it's accurate that George Soros is the lizard god king, or linking Soros with the Rothschild, or engaging in the New World Order conspiracy theory or interacting with those who spread Great Replacement, Musk is regularly spreading that kind of coded messaging that leads to anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitic messaging has doubled since Musk took over. According to the same analysis, hate speech as a whole has tripled with a sustained volume of anti-Semitic hate speech on the platform. Combined with Musk's validation of their conspiracy theories, along with essentially non-existent content moderation, Twitter now offers the best opportunities for extremists to recruit and for anti-Semitism itself to become mainstream. The tweets I've shown you today are really just scratching the surface of Elon Musk. Like, he's tweeted, liked, commented under so much garbage, but he'll always write something like, accurate, interesting, put an emoji, put an exclamation point or something. So he has the plausible deniability of, well, I didn't really say anything. I didn't say I totally agree with that stuff, although I'm just amplifying it to hundreds of millions of people. And like I was just saying, like, he's destroyed most of the structure of the old Twitter. And honestly, Twitter was never perfect. Obviously, as like a left-wing person on Twitter, it's pretty easy to get dogpiled by conservatives, no matter like what era of Twitter we're talking about. But um, I made a tweet about that Aztec game the other day. And literally every single comment underneath was just some absolutely unhinged conservative because it got traction. I got like, you know, 18,000 likes or something. And literally, again, it just attracted the far right to my tweet. And every single tweet, no matter how little engagement it had, was just at the top of the reply, saying stuff about me, posting really racist memes about how they want to like kill native people and stuff and play as conquistadors. And that's just what the site is now, right? The moment they have a chance to pounce on something, they will. Even if there's like a minority conservative replies on that site, they show up looking like they're the majority. So the overall opinion you see on Twitter now because of Twitter Blue is just conservative. But because it's American conservative, that is more skewered to the far right because most American conservatives are far right by any political definition not to mention just the wild anti-Semitism, transphobia, and endorsement of violence against political opponents. I can't even imagine any conservative who can argue with me that they're not far right at this point, like Ron DeSantis, Donald Trump, and their supporters. Like I said before, you have some old school people like Mitt Romney. Who likes Mitt Romney anymore? Like He calls out that side of the Republican Party. He's very conservative himself. But it's not like most of the tweets I'm showing you are from people who love Mitt Romney and hate DeSantis. All of them are now in for DeSantis, right? And the only thing between them now is if you stay loyal to Trump or if you support DeSantis. But essentially, politically, these two people are exactly the same. So there's obviously like many reasons why Elon Musk is pandering to the far right. Of course, probably chief among them, his ego. He always wants to be liked. He's absolutely embarrassing. He loves people who simp for him. Loves the Babylon Bee for constantly licking his ass. He loves all that stuff, right? And now he's found this sycophantic audience in the American far right masquerading as some sort of conservative movement, I guess. And also he is now collaborating with major players in the mainstream far right in America, Tucker Carlson, Ron DeSantis, and really embracing this like anti-vax rhetoric as well. 
And with the Ron DeSantis thing, it's interesting. It does show far-right politicians getting into bed with big business. And obviously, Ron DeSantis right now is going to war against Disney. The war against woke Disney because of their lukewarm support for LGBT people and stuff like that. Like, he hates them, right? And it makes him look like he's anti-big business. He's standing up to the establishment. But as that, you know, story showed you, happy to sign loads of laws into effect protecting people like Elon Musk from any liability should people actually die at the company he owns. And I think this is a good case study of just how even authoritarian fascism, which often controls so much of people's lives, they need support of the business elite. And the business elite are often very willing to get into bed with these types because they offer them a chance to basically have more of a monopoly, for example. And even in a really right-wing place like Putin's Russia, it's often framed as him being like a very powerful dictator who can do whatever he wants, regardless of how any Russians feel. But he does have a very powerful elite surrounding him and propping him up. And if anything went really wrong with the war, for example, I'm sure they'd quickly switch to another person they could prop up. Because in a capitalist oligarchy like Russia and what the US is becoming, the elite matter most and who they back matters most. And right now, the conventional elite are really, really wanting Ron DeSantis to win. Because as much as Donald Trump is the elite, because he is his own like businessman and president, he's just more unhinged. You can't control him, right? Too narcissistic, doesn't want to really give in all the time. Where someone like Ron DeSantis, he'll play ball like he did with Elon Musk. Help me launch my presidential campaign and I'll sign these laws for you. So um, just an article I was reading today by Kira Torres Bellasi, um, How Big Business Bailed Out the Nazis. It's largely a forgotten piece of history, but in 1932, the German National Socialist Party was facing financial ruin. How did they move from being broke to being in control of the German government just a year later? They were bailed out by German industrialists in 1933. The industrialists who led the way were two huge German firms, IG Farben and Krupp. Leaders of both companies were among the few civilians who were later charged with crimes at Nuremberg. These trials placed the story of their financial and moral support of the Nazis into historical record. Krupp was a huge arms manufacturer. IG Farben was a vast chemical company which made everything from Bayer Aspirin to Zyklon B. According to the arms of Krupp, the National Socialist Party was essentially bankrupt in 1932. Regardless of the party's financial problems, Hitler was named Chancellor in January 1933 and he called for elections in early March. With less than two weeks before the vote, Goring sent telegrams to Germany's 25 leading industrialists, inviting them to a secret meeting in Berlin on February 20th, 1933. Attending the gathering were four IG Farben directors and Krupp chief Gustav Krupp. Hitler addressed the group saying, private enterprise cannot be maintained in a democracy. He also told the men that he would eliminate trade unions and communists. Hitler asked for their financial support and to back his vision for Germany. According to Robert Jackson, the former Supreme Court Justice and Chief Prosecutor at Nuremberg, the industrialists became so enthusiastic that they set about to raise 3 million Reichsmarks, about 30 million US dollars today, to strengthen and confirm the National Socialists in power. Gustav Krupp was the first executive to speak at the Berlin meeting and pledged 1 million marks, as summarized by the UN in 19. Hitler then awarded Krupp the title of the Führer of Industry later in 1933. Krupp acted in concert with other businessmen, including the directors of IG Farben, then Europe's largest corporation. At this February meeting, IG Farben gave them 400,000 marks and a total of 4.5 million marks by the end of 1933. As the book Hell's Cartel explains, the history of the German industrialist support of Hitler shows what can go wrong when political objectives and pursuit of profit become dangerously intertwined. One can only surmise what might have happened, if the businessman had simply said no. But capitalist businessmen are never going to say no. Like, Elon Musk isn't going to say no. And if there is profit to be made, if you're going to get favourable conditions from a new government, regardless of who they are, you will back that for profit's sake. And just like with all these companies I mentioned, they immensely benefited off Hitler's rule of Germany. All this slave labour they got during the war from the camps, Eastern European labour camps, allied POWs, loads of these companies exploited that to make even more profit, which they were already making loads of because they were the main companies helping with the war, creating medicine, creating weapons. And even before the war, it was allowing them basically a monopoly. 
So often people wrongly say that like national socialism is left wing. But if it was left wing anti-capitalist, why were they bankrolled by the biggest capitalists of the day? And why once they're in power, did this capitalist class keep getting rewarded? The national socialists hated the capitalists so much, they could have just used them. They could have just used their money to get to power and then crack down on them. But again, these national socialists were a form of capitalists themselves. And that's why capitalists like them because they could get into bed with the state and could continue exploiting labor value just in a very more brutal and just like generally illegal fashion. Of course, they're not free market capitalists. That's a different thing, but they are capitalists nonetheless. And it just shows you that people like Elon Musk, they were always ally of people who will help their profits. DeSantis seems to be a guy that a lot of these businessmen are really hedging their bets on right now. That's why like, it seems like Rupert Murdoch is back in DeSantis as well because Fox News have firmly gone against Trump promoting DeSantis. Everyone seems to be promoting DeSantis, Daily Wire as well. And that just shows you capital only cares about one thing. And that is capital. So allying with people like Ron DeSantis, Trump in the past, all this stuff, that's why they do it. So that is it for the video, how Elon Musk is basically a fascist in one way or another, whether or not he believes in it or he's just doing it to make money and massage his ego. I guess that's up to you. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.